What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Warren, I am a property investor across the UK and a bank here in London. My goal is to live free and independently from property, so I'm looking for an income of 3,000 pounds per month from property. If that's what you're on to, like, subscribe, that is what my content is all about. So guys, if you've been watching my recent videos, you know that I am now buying a property in Hull, in the northeast of England of all places. And I've had a lot of messages from you on my videos via Instagram, just via direct messages from friends. Why are you buying in Hull? Why are you investing in property in Hull? Hull seems to be one of those cities in the UK that has a certain reputation in people's minds. So today, I'm gonna to take you through the key reasons why I chose Hull as my next area to invest in property in. Because I pretty much had the whole of the north of the UK to choose from. You know that I invest in the north of the UK. Why did I choose Hull? Let's get into the detail behind that. And I think by the end of this, you are probably gonna at least have more of a structured approach behind what cities you choose to invest in. So first of all, I'm gonna start with my goals, a couple of my goals. My first goal, guys, is affordability. It surrounds affordability. When I'm investing in property up in the north, I'm basically targeting properties that are basically priced all the way up to 120,000. My sweet spot is around about 100,000 because that's affordable for me. And then secondly, guys, when it comes to what I wanna actually get out of the property, I'm targeting income. So with this property in whole that I'm investing in, I'm actually going to go for the serviced accommodation. So airbnbbooking.com approach because that is higher yielding. It's more income per month as compared to say a standard buy to let on a normal tenancy, right? But then in combination with that, guys, I also want growth, yeah? So a lot of property education sources out there say it's either income or growth. I firmly believe, guys, you can get both if you put in the effort, okay? It's not necessarily binary, like one or the other. And people, when they talk about one or the other, they'll be like, you know, London's growth and the North is income. But no, if you look at a city like, say, Manchester, for example, or Liverpool, you know, you're getting income, good yields and good growth from the rise in the capital value of those properties over time. So you can absolutely get both, but I probably would put more of a preference or a weighting towards the income side of things at this stage of my investing journey. So if you've been watching my channel for long enough, you know that I am a spreadsheet nerd when it comes to property investing. I'm gonna take you through right now some of the key KPIs, key performance indicators, key metrics that I use when I'm choosing an area to invest in. So you might wanna, at various stages, take screenshots of this video and use them for yourself. Let's get straight into it. So here are a few of my key KPIs that I use when I'm looking to invest in a property in a particular city. So the first one is the average house price. That's pretty much what it says on the tin. How much are you going to spend on average? And it gives me an idea of basically whether the city or town is affordable or not. I'm targeting two beds these days. So what is the average rent? That's gonna allow me to work out the yield. What is a five and 10 year growth of properties in those cities. And let me just show you where I get the information from. If I'm looking for the five, 10 year growth and the average house price, I go to the land registry because that is a record of all bought and sold properties in the UK. So I wanted to get the average growth in prices of property in Manchester. So let's say from March 2018 to March 2023, that's five years. And it's really as simple as this. I would take the price of property now in March 2023 divide it by what prices were five years ago in March 2018 and that's going to give me the percentage increase and I can go further back if I wanted to like so for example from March 2023 all the way back 10 years to March 2013 and it's just simple maths to get the percentage growth from one period to the next. And then for rent, I use a site called Open Rent. So say I wanted the rent of Fallowfield in Manchester. That was where I went to uni, so I know that town. It's just an example. And I want it to be quite specific. So I want it within one kilometer of Fallowfield. Let's put the range from the minimum all the way up to max, update, search. Oh, let's just update. So I said I'm looking at two beds. So two beds is what I'm looking at specifically. And let 
let's zoom in. Yeah, say I'm looking for properties on, as it just so happens, really conveniently, um, Maldiff Road. I can see what the rent of other two beds nearby is. So you've got one here for 1,700. You've got a let agreed. Um, so let agreed is basically properties that have been agreed. The ones in blue are pending. So let agreed, 975 pounds per month. That's a two bed flat. So that's not actually a house. So it's slightly different. Let's zoom back in again. Two bed flat again, 1,500. 1,700. So you can see on average, you can get basically an idea that, you know, if I was happening to buy a property in this specific road here nearby, you know, I can be looking at a rent of round about 1,500, 1,600. So pretty accurate. And then I've got some data on demographics. So um, how many people are classified as affluent and middle class, working class, job seekers and claimants? That gives me really an idea of the demographic of people in that city or town and really gives me an idea of who I'm going to be renting to, okay? And I can get all of that data from Nomis. Again, you just search by the city like so, Manchester, and it's going to give you a lot of information um, and break it down by demographics. So how many are in a certain age range? How many are employed? How many are seeking employment? students, what type of job categories the population falls into, and then stuff around sort of job seekers, who's on benefits, who's a lone parent, who's single parents. Really good information to help you build up an idea of um, you know who lives in the city. Then inward investment, this is more around basically, you know, what's going on in that area? Are there big developments going on? Are there companies coming to build their headquarters in the city? Are they doing a regeneration of the city centre? Are they doing a whole drive to build hundreds, thousands of homes, you know, in the area, in town, in the city? All of that is around inward investment, regeneration basically, and you can find that basically on the local council's website, okay? There's usually, more often than not, a page or a good few pages dedicated to regeneration that's happening in the city, in the town. And then this is my own thing, a score. Basically, based on these metrics, these KPIs here, I give the city a score out of 10, and that's just for my own purposes, right? So it helps me basically summarize a lot of this information, give me an overview of, you know, this looks like somewhere promising, or maybe not, or maybe somewhere with potential. And then just some other metrics that I find quite helpful is the population of the town or city, nearest major city or town. So if it's not a Liverpool or a Manchester or a Birmingham, if it's more of a secondary city or town even, or village, you know, where is the nearest big city or town? And then stuff like attractions, maybe that's um, tourist stuff, maybe that's a port, maybe it's, you know, lots of stuff, a cathedral, all of that kind of stuff. And that's really important when you're talking about service accommodation strategy and then major employers, are there big companies nearby? And just to give you an example of stuff I've done already, here's one I did earlier, Liverpool. Um, you've got the metrics already in there. So you've got the, um, the average house price, you've got the average rent, and the growths and also the population demographics, you know, in terms of who's middle class, who's working class, who's seeking a job. Haven't done one for inward investment. The reason why is because I already bought in Liverpool five years ago now. So I already have a good idea of, you know, what has been invested in Liverpool, like lots of inward investment, lots of building around the ports, um, around housing there, the L1 shopping center, it was the um, European City of Culture not so long ago, okay? So I know that already, so that's why it's not here. And then you've got the population there already. As I go along, got the same for Manchester. As you, as you can see, Manchester is more expensive, okay? Manchester started regenerating before Liverpool did. They were one of the first non-London cities in the UK to really get serious about investing then Liverpool are kind of like slightly behind them but two great cities and they both have really good demographics um, it's kind of reflected in these right so um, in a 10-year growth Manchester comes out on top because they've just done more over that time period but as you can see over the last five years it's uh, Liverpool actually ahead because Liverpool have been basically catching up with Manchester in terms of um, their drive to regenerate slightly bigger population in Manchester um, in terms of nearest major cities that doesn't really apply to Liverpool and Manchester because they are major cities. Again, attractions, I already know what they are because I lived in Manchester for three years. I was at uni there and uh, the major employers, I'm quite familiar with what they are. 
Now let's just go on to Hull. So I think this is where you're gonna really see the value. Um, I use Manchester and Liverpool as basically benchmarks because they are kind of examples of what good looks like in terms of a city in the north, outside of London, up and coming, growing, good place to invest. Hull, as you can see, is a lot cheaper than Liverpool and Manchester, so that's already a tick in the box. The rent is a lower in Hull for a two bed. Um, again, understandably, it's not on Liverpool and Manchester's level in really any criteria. So the question becomes, is Hull a city with potential to get up to or near to the levels of the likes of Liverpool and Manchester? The growth hasn't been too bad, 24% in five years, 62% in 10 years. So it's not actually that far behind Liverpool over the last 10 years, not really lacing Manchester's boots um, in terms of the last five years behind Liverpool and Manchester. But if we're honest, over the last 10 years in total, there hasn't been a lot of inward investment and regeneration going into Hull. That's been more recent, okay? And we'll come on to that. And that's why I think this is a more promising city. Again, the affluent middle class, it's much lower than Liverpool or Manchester. Um, working class is slightly higher and there are more um, job seekers and benefits claimants in Hull. And again, that's reflective of the history of Hull. You know, it's one of those cities that declined, similar to cities like, you know, Stoke and other cities and towns that are really manufacturing dominant um, in, in earlier decades. But as you can see here in the inward investment, you've got hundreds of millions of pounds of investment coming into Hull that I don't think a lot of people are necessarily aware of that could you know, be a really good news positive story in terms of the city's growth. So you've got 19 million from the government's leveling up fund. You've got a 27 million investment in fishing ports and 84 million investment going into a fruit market area. 96 million going into Albion Square. And if I just go on to a article here, um, 96 million Albion Square, get rid of that. 96 million Albion Square project um, gets a go final go ahead. Worth saying guys, yeah, I'm looking at projects and investments and regeneration that's been given the green lights, so not stuff that's in the works, that's a pipe dream that people think is a nice to have, stuff that's actually been approved and ready to go. So if we just read through this really quickly, Albion Square is going to involve the building of 226 new homes, office and retail space, urban park, car park, which is all good stuff. Um, it's been empty since the museum was destroyed in a bombing raid in 1941. Guys, 80 years. Wow. And the site's been derelict for. Again, this is, you know, what I'm saying. Some cities have just been really neglected in the UK and are just ripe for regeneration. Final plans has been made to whole city's planning committee. And they've got some mock-ups, you know, artist impressions of what it's gonna look like when it's developed. Now, it probably won't look exactly like this, but, you know, generally speaking, um, the end product of regeneration schemes tends to be pretty close to the, um, to the computer generated impressions. So, you know, this looks really good, you know. If I'm living in or around uh, an area a regenerated area that looks like this, I'm gonna be really happy. And I think that's gonna have a good impact on house prices. So this is a view of what it looks like now, or part of what it looks like now. So I imagine they're gonna bulldoze all of that and build in its place. They're also looking to build 512 homes at Preston Road. So I think that's an area of whole. So guys, I mean, there's more in addition to this, but I just wanted to put a few of them in there to highlight the amount of investment that's coming into Hull over the next five, 10 years. They're really serious about regeneration. It's not just a million here or five million here, which, you know, in and of themselves are large amounts of money. But when we're talking about hundreds of millions, all going into one city, that is a, a good news story. And that is potential right there. So then just looking at the population, 267,000 people in Hull. So a decent sized city. You know, Hull is a solid city in the UK. People have heard of Hull, but also, um, you know, it's near to probably more prominent cities such as York and Leeds, which are both within two hours um, of Hull. So York's one hour away. L York's lovely. So you, you can imagine, you know, quite a few people would travel from Hull to York and uh, Leeds is just an hour and a half away. So, you know, when I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking of maybe workers who work in those cities, but commute, but live in Hull and commute there because it's cheaper in Hull. And then just lastly, looking at some of the attractions, oh, it was a UK city of culture in 2017. I actually forgot about that. It's got one of the biggest aquariums in Europe. 
Maritime Museum, Wilberforce Museum, so a lot of history there. And then when you're talking about major employers, some big players here, so Siemens, BP, Crown Paints. So guys, that was really my process of how I select and land on cities to invest in. Now, I'm not saying go and invest in Hull property tomorrow because it is a risk. Me personally, I know that there are other more safer bets to invest in right now in the UK. Cities like Nottingham, Derby, Sheffield, I think those are gonna pop sooner than Hull. Hull is more of a long-term risky bet. So it might work, it might not, right? But I've spent the first five years of my property investing journey investing in safe cities. I invested in Manchester, Liverpool, Sheffield, okay? Safe, solid investments to start off with. Now, I feel like I'm in a position where I can take a few more risks and see how that pans out. Guys, let me know what you think of my approach. Let me know in the comment section. Are you looking to take risks? Have you gotten some value from the way that I approach investing? Would you look to do the same or similar? Make it your own guys, don't just copy me. You know, I developed this myself by looking at lots of different people's investing strategies, making my own, formulating my own one based on what they do. Guys, thank you as always for supporting the channel. Like and subscribe, share this channel with other people that you think might benefit from it, and I'll see you on the next one.